Hi everybody. Welcome to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. In this video, we're going to continue our work on our Yukon Racing Kayak build. Uh, this, I believe, is probably episode 10. We're rocking. We're getting a lot of work done, and we are kind of under a time crunch on this, so I know we put out a lot of video in a hurry, but uh, we're glad you're here. In the last video, uh, we terrifyingly cut a hole in the middle of the deck to uh, figure out where the transom and the, or I'm sorry, the cockpit and the uh, combing were going to go. And we were successful with that. We sort of teased this video because we showed that we got the hull and the deck separated off of the strong, strong bag. We've had some question about how this boat is built. When we put the strong bag together, uh, we started making the hull, then we flipped the whole thing over after we had completed that, and then we used our cedar strips and we made the deck. At a point, it all has to come apart, and that uh, causes a little apprehension because um, you hope that you haven't glued any of the strips to the molds. Uh, we had a minor uh, disaster with tearing part of the back end of the hull as we tried to take it loose. I made a bad mistake and did not unscrew the transom piece from the mold. And uh, the result was is I ripped it all completely off the transom. Fortunately, the transom's only that big. And so uh, it was fixable as many things in boat building are. But uh, anyway, so we're, that's what we're gonna do this time. We're gonna show you how we uh, do some planing, some sanding, uh, and separate the hull so we can get that much closer to a point where we're going to be able to start doing some fiberglass work. All right, well, uh, if you would happen to be new to the channel, consider subscribing. Uh, this is one of many projects on the Jenkins Boat Works channel, and so dig around, look in the channel, see what you see, see if you like something, and if so, consider subscribing. Uh, for everybody else, we're glad you're here and can continue to follow this project. Uh, we do have a playlist for this build, and I think this is about the 10th video episode in this series, and we just keep adding them to the playlist. The playlist will be available in the video description and also at the end of the video. So if you've missed an episode or you want to binge watch it or whatever, uh, you can catch that link and do so. All right, let's jump in and see if we can get the deck apart. I'm thinking about all the canoes and stuff I've built where I've done it without staples. And man, that's pretty ugly. The beauty we got with this is we're painting it. Uh, we're gonna get away with a multitude of sins. So I'm using a 3M, 3M Cubitron sandpaper. Um, I like this. It doesn't have designated holes in it for your sander, so it'll fit on a Craftsman. It'll even fit on my Festool. And so it's just got the, all these little areas where the, the air can get, dust can get sucked through there with the vacuum. Um, using 80 grit. And we've gone over this and probably spent about 45 minutes or so. I went through a lot of sandpaper. Uh, let's see, about eight, nine, nine pieces to do the whole thing. Now that's for the deck. I'm gonna flip this thing over and, and now do the hull. Uh, we're gonna have to pull all the staples and everything first. And we'll probably use a plane on some of it to get the really high spots and rough spots off of it. 
change your paper early, change it often. Um, you can tell when it's just not doing the job anymore and you feel yourself pressing a sander down harder to try to try to get some action and then you know you just need to change your paper. So um, I believe we'll probably come back and do this again with uh, 120. And that's probably gonna be it before we fiberglass. Now you may be able to see here, there's a few little places where we got some, some little holes in here. And I'm trying to decide whether or not I wanna worry about it or not. Uh, structurally and integri integrity wise, it's, it's fine. Uh, especially since we're gonna put the fiberglass and epoxy on it. Um, and if we were gonna be finishing it to the natural wood color, I would absolutely go in here and fill these little gaps because those would show up. But uh, we're gonna be painting this. So uh, once, the, once the fiberglass is on there, we'll sand that smooth and, and none of that will matter. So as long as we're gonna paint it, um, it's fine. We really don't have to worry about you know, some of those little imperfections. Come along great though. I did leave staples in here on this shear line for the top part. So we are still connected to the forms. And uh, so I am gonna go ahead now and flip this thing over. And we'll, you're gonna see a huge difference between what this looks like, where we've got some good sanding going on compared to uh, but well, all kind of work we still have to do on, on the hole, on the bottom. So let's go ahead and see if we can flip this thing over. What a difference, <laughs> what a difference. You can actually see here, I had gone in with a little bit of uh, glue and sawdust and whatever and filled in some of these cracks before we flipped it. There's another big spot right there. Uh, so look at that, there's still tape on here. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna pull all the staples and then probably take the plane to it, a real sharp plane, like I can feel just ridges, you know, there, there, and we don't try to sand that, it'd take forever. So we'll knock the high spots off. May use a paint scraper, and yeah, probably a sharp plane's gonna do most of that work. Um, um, I bought a kit, and we're gonna do it with sandpaper, and so we got various grades of sandpaper and a piece of glass. And then I've got this uh, little helper to get the right angle on here. And so what, this is a cool deal. It's a go helper honing guide system. And so the idea is you can use this and figure out what your, your blade angle is or what the bevel angle is. And you can kind of look at that and see, well, that's probably, it's not 45 degrees, it's maybe 30, as far as, you know, the, how it slopes down. But that kind of doesn't matter completely because more importantly, you know, what is the, what is the angle of the bevel here? And so this got this little guide and you can put your deal in here kind of hold it level with, with this and then see if it matches the angle. And, what I'm coming into, coming up with on this, it looks to me like it's a, a 25 degree. 20's not enough. 25, 25 looks like that's it to me. So I got this deal and you can adjust the stop and I've got it set at 25. You could, you could do it at, you know, wherever you wanted, 30, 35, 40, whatever. And you can use this for chisels too. So I've got that locked down at 25, and then I put, the, put this dude in here like this, 
And so let's take that out of there for a second so you can see it. So this deal just fits in this slot here. And then there's got a place here where you can, you can lock down your, your blade just by turning this deal and tightening it up. So now I've got that tight. And then the idea is, is that when you go to sharpen it, you should be at your 25 degree angle. Okay, I finally got this plane adjusted where I want it. So it's just barely taking a little bit off instead of gouging these big, huge pieces out of it. Much better, much finer. I was really digging into it before. This is better. We're not trying to get it perfect. We're just knocking out the high spots. Once I got the plane tuned up, we really made some progress on this. We're ready to start sanding this. <laughs> Look at all this trash and debris down here. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we shaved a couple pounds off of it. Dang. It's pretty fun. At a point, you kind of got to go, wait, we maybe better stop here a little bit. <laughs> pretty smooth. We have had a couple of things going on. Uh, where is it? Okay, up here. This particular strip... The grain was kind of running funky, and I tore out a kind of ugly piece right there. That's probably, I don't think it's a sixth, maybe it's a sixteenth of an inch deep right there. Um, but I just stopped. I was like, okay, no, don't even try to fix that. Um, we're going to have to fill that. Also, we have one little knot back up here. Um, it's not got a hole through it all the way, but we're going to strengthen that a little bit. And then I had a rather horrifying event back here when I was first starting to pull staples out. And we had staples in the mahogany transom back here. That, that stays with the boat. And so um, I, was, I pulled these staples out of here, and I probably didn't need to, but I wanted to sand. And then I pulled these staples out of here, and... I think we would think it was in here, <clears throat> one of these, and it was kind of stuck in there tight, and I pulled really hard, and this split from here all the way down this seam here, and it was horrifying. I was like, oh my god, and it pulled away from, it pulled away from the transom on this side. I, quick like a bunny, took some of my super glue here, and filled the crack, re-glued this to the transom, and at this point I can't even tell exactly where the crack was. It was either all the way up on that or down on this, and I'm not at this point I'm not sure. Because now I sent I know it's right there, but I sanded the glue back off. We're in really good shape on the hull. Now the fact that we aren't finishing this natural color is gonna allow me to do some things. There's a little place right there with a little bit of tear out, a little hole right there. This actually looks better than the deck. Uh, on the deck, especially at the front, there's several places where it was really hard to get the strips to match up. And we kind of got this curved over. That's looking pretty good. There's a little place here we might fill. So we're going to use some Total Boat, Total Fare, which is a two-part epoxy uh, fairing compound. And I'm going to be pretty careful with how I do it. There's a little piece of tear out right there, probably from a, well, I don't know what that's from. There were no staples there. 
So uh, all in all, I'm really happy with it. We're gonna sand this first because all we've done at this point is plane it, but I'm really pretty happy with you know how smooth it is just from planing. And we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, get some 80 grit on here and sand this down good. All right, so we got a really solid sanding on here with 60 grit. And I see some little imperfection places that we're gonna go ahead and fill. Part of me wants to see if this thing will pop loose off the molds. Uh, there is some fear that as you're gluing and stapling and all that, that uh, you could have glued it to the, the inner molds. And we had a couple of questions in our comments uh, just regarding kind of this process and what we're doing and how it's going to go. Um, I've been asked how much it weighs. I don't know. Uh, at the moment, all the strong back and all the molds are still inside here. To my recollection, I think there was in the neighborhood of 22 uh, molds as well as the two by four strong back. So, you know, it feels a little heavy right now to lift because there's all that structure in the inside of it, but that's all coming out. Uh, we're just going to be left with these shells. So we've got the hull here and then obviously the deck down here, so it's upside down. So once we get fiberglass and epoxy on this, uh, then we have to flip it and do the, do the deck and do the same thing. But once that's done, we are gonna completely take this apart and we'll have two halves. And so then we'll be able to do the insides uh, and do our fiberglass. We are actually going to use a carbon Kevlar uh, combo cloth uh, in the inside of the hull just for strength and protection and uh, so there's a whole lot of work to do obviously but I, I'm still just dying to know. I've got all the staples out of the hull and I removed them from anything that was attached to either the transom or this stem. Remember there's an inner stem here. Now the staples are still in uh, here for the deck, but this should, we should be able to separate it. I don't want to get too carried away because I'm going to leave it on these molds to do the fiberglass work. But Ooh, it's popping loose. Look at that. Feels like a good opportunity to get a splinter. Okay, we're kind of stuck up here. Almost wonder if it'd be easy. Well, no, I can't take the deck off because I don't want to take the deck off because the deck is still stapled. Yeah, look, 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 look. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Oh, that's pretty lightweight. <laughs> I can tell without all that stuff attached to it. Wow. Okay, that's cool. That's, that's cool. Okay, part of the reason I want that apart, I am going to do some fill work just to, to take care of some of these little cracks and stuff. But when I go to fiberglass this, I do not want epoxy dripping down and getting on the deck and gluing the whole thing together. So we're going to take and put wax paper in this seam so that uh, that doesn't happen. And uh, so I did, I just bought a whole new roll of wax paper. We're good, we'll do that. But okay, so now let's, let's fill some of this stuff and then um, we'll go from there. How exciting. Oh, this is awesome. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.